Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready. This is Daniel White the Third with the Second Coming Watch update. This is update number 536. And let's take a quick look at today's prophecy related headlines which point towards the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. Get ready, get ready, get ready. First today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East. According to the Associated Press, U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry held an unexpected second meeting in two days with a key Arab mediator from Oman in the Iran nuclear talks. Part of a last-minute push to meet a Monday deadline for a deal that would ease the threat of the Islamic Republic reaching the capability to produce atomic weapons. Despite the diplomatic efforts, signs increasingly pointed to a further extension in negotiations. Oman, unique among the Gulf Arab states for the close ties it maintains with Iran, hosted high-level nuclear talks earlier this month and was the site of secret U.S. Iranian gatherings dating back to 2012. Those discussions laid the groundwork for an interim nuclear agreement reached a year ago, which world powers and Iran are now trying to cement in Vienna with a comprehensive pact by Monday. Second, today under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East, according to the Times of Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is expected to present to a full cabinet vote on Sunday a softened version of a controversial bill that would enshrine Israel's Jewish status in its constitutional laws. The new draft would seek to define Israel as a Jewish and democratic state which upholds the rights of all its citizens under law. Netanyahu's favored draft is aimed to give equal weight to the principles of Israel as a democracy and as a Jewish state. Third, today under the sign category of distress among nations, according to Reuters, a senior official from the OSCE security watchdog said on Thursday that prospects for peace in eastern Ukraine are bleak, underscoring the need to uphold a shaky ceasefire between government forces and pro-Russian separatist rebels. The Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe's envoy to the trilateral contact group that includes senior representatives from Ukraine and Russia said there was no alternative to peace accords signed in Minsk in September, no matter how dire the situation. Fighting in eastern Ukraine has killed an average of 13 people each day in the eight weeks since the ceasefire agreement. Fourth, today under the sign category of distress among nations, according to Reuters, NATO's new Secretary General said the military alliance has had to scramble warplanes 400 times this year in response to an increase in Russian air activity around Europe, a rise of 50% over last year. North Atlantic Treaty Organization members have sought to fill gaps in the alliance's land, air, and sea defenses. Since Russia annexed Crimea, 
and backed the secessionist movement in the eastern part of Ukraine. Speaking to U.S., German, and Estonian troops at a newly expanded and renovated air base in western Estonia, the Secretary General said the problem was not just where the Russians are flying, but that they are not turning on their transponders or communicating. As such, the flights pose a risk to commercial air traffic. Fifth today, under the sign category of diseases and epidemics, according to the BBC, bird flu was found on a duck farm in England on Monday, days after it was discovered in Dutch chickens, forcing authorities to destroy poultry and restrict exports. Health officials said the outbreak may have been brought to Europe by wild birds migrating from Asia, where millions of South Korean farm birds have had to be destroyed. A spokeswoman at Britain's Department for Environmental Food and Rural Affairs said the public health risk was very low and there was no risk to the food chain. Beloved, you can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. The prophetic passage of scripture we are looking at today is Genesis 26, 2-5, which reads, And the Lord appeared unto him, and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Surge on in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries." And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father, and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give unto thy seed all these countries. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to share with you some commentary on this passage from the Popular Bible Prophecy Commentary edited by Dr. Tim LaHaye and Dr. Ed Heinzen. Following the death of Abraham, the Lord appears to Isaac to reaffirm the Abrahamic covenant with Abraham's heir saying, I will establish the oath which I swore to your father Abraham, instructing Isaac to remain in the land of his inheritance. The Lord reaffirms the covenant blessings of his personal presence, numerous descendants as the stars of heaven. Universal blessing by your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, and permanent ownership of the land. To you and to your descendants, I will give all these lands. The appearance concludes with a reminder of the unconditionality of the Abrahamic covenant, which was based upon Abraham's initial act of obedience to God. Dear friends, if the Lord Terrace is coming and we live, we will continue looking at the prophetic passages of the Bible in our next broadcast slash podcast. Our second coming quote for today is from Anthony Ashley Cooper. He said, the only remedy for all this mass of misery is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we not plead for it every time we hear the clock strike? Dear friend, if you are not ready for the the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by trusting him as your Savior today, believing in your heart that he died for your sins, was buried, and that he rose from the dead. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
So just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will save you. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, dear friend, keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Don't 